Well, cool. I'm still here in Flint, Michigan, looking at the new heavy-duty General Motors, the Silverado HD 2020. It's so exciting. Just got through looking at the trucks. We'll be driving the trucks pretty soon, but I am here with the boss, the head cheese. This is Jacqueline McQuaid. McQuaid, yes. Oh, cool. And you've been the head boss for three years. Vehicle chief engineer of the heavy duty program, yes, for about three years. Oh, now this is so cool because I'm an old farm boy uh -huh. and we grew up with farm girls. Everybody drew trucks. I've got a lady <laughs> named Kelsey that does have, does my reviews. She drives the trucks. She loads the horses, loads the ATVs, loads the tractors. Really? And I'm in the horse industry. A lot of women driving big trucks in the horse industry. Really? But it's not too many women are the bosses of the big trucks. Cody Christian makes your trailer smoother ride isolates between the truck and the trailer so your trailer doesn't fill the truck the truck doesn't fill the trailer your horses have a better ride your cargo has a better ride you have a better ride in the truck History is solved. In part one, I talked about the gooseneck ball being two inches to the rear of the axle in the frames that I saw there. I was confused by that. The GM engineers got a hold of me and explained that, yes, on the short bed, the standard bed, it is two inches to the rear, but it's still centered between the rear leaf spring from the front hanger to the rear shackle. And actually, that's where they say the weight distribution works well on that short bed. But it also gives you a little more room for your gooseneck trailer, your fifth wheel trailer, so you don't hit the cab when you're turning corners, which is a good thing. That extra three inches basically will help you. That's on the standard bed. On the long bed, the eight-foot bed, it is one inch ahead of the axle where I like it to have it. That's good for those really super big weights. That's where they put it. So they understand weight distribution. All that makes sense. And now it's uh, we understand why the balls are in two different places. All they had to do is switch that frame around to change that ball too, so they can use the same hitch. So that will help you get you some of that uh, weight to the front axle and good steering. So how did you do all that? I mean, what what's what's your perspective on this from a woman's viewpoint of being the big boss over all the heavy duty trucks at GM? Well, you know, I, I don't know that I look at it as the woman's viewpoint. I look at it as I'm somebody that's driven trucks pretty much all of my career. My my first uh, vehicle that I learned to drive on was an 85 Suburban. So I'm, I'm heavily versed in full-size trucks. I hired into GM 20 years ago in the truck space, and more than half of my career has been trucks. So I'm a trucker, and uh, <laughs> when you look at it that way, I understand the truck customer. And so I was well-suited to take on this role. Well, that's good. Now, can you back up a trailer? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I have a commercial driver's license. Oh, you do? I do so too. I'm, Great. CDL. I'm fully awesome. certified with a CDL. Oh, man. And I've taken trailers up to, you know, 35,000 pounds on three-day road trips. And I can I can alley dock. I can parallel park them. You name it. Well, this is good because everybody will want to know, you know, if they're if they're talking to you about trucks, if you know what you're talking about. Absolutely. And, and that's a fair question, right? They should want to yeah. make sure that the chief engineer of the truck knows what she's talking about. Well, yeah, I love that. See, I'm in Colorado, so we do the Ike Gauntlet. You know, we do 11,000 feet. We tow uh -huh. 30,000 pounds. Absolutely. And we're going to take yours to whatever weight we can get on a dually. But this is exciting stuff. But, yeah, you're the truck lady. This is too cool. GM owns the truck lady. <laughs> you know what? When I first took on the job, I went and talked to customers. First thing I did was go and talk to some heavy duty truck customers. And I met a lot of really impressive customers, men and women, who use their trucks to do some serious work. And I got to talk to them about what they wanted in a truck to make sure that we can give them everything they need. Well, that's true. I really like that. I like focus groups. I like you listening to people because well, nobody knows better than the guys driving the trucks and the gals driving the trucks what they want, what they want changed. And now that you've you know raised the, the rating, that was always our complaint last few years, yeah. is why did you buy, you know, you, everybody else's one ton was 30,000 pounds and you guys were 23,000 pounds. And now you can be up to 35,500. That's incredible. So now you're right in the thick of things. You're back there and very competitive. And this is this is the most competitive I've seen trucks. I've been and doing this 40 years. Competitive, I would say best in class max towing at 35,000. 500. Oh, you're saying you're better than everybody else. We are best in class max towing at 35,500. Well, that's good. It's a competitive business. You better be out there leading the charge. This is good. Well, thanks, Jacqueline. It's nice meeting you, and good luck with the new Heavy Duty 2020. Thank you so much. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. You bet. All right, I'm here with the next engineer from GM, and you are? Max Sala. I'm Max the chief engineer Sala. The diesel engine. Oh, yeah, wow. Really what? proud the chief engineer. Okay, now you got the accent. Where are you from? I'm from Italy. Oh, well, that's cool. They make you know some that. neat stuff in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> so are you the chief engineer on the Duramax I'm the diesel? Of the Duramax diesel. Wow, yes. you're the big cheese. Yes. You know everything. Yeah. 
So I, the, I the torque and horsepower didn't change a whole lot. No. That's Does that right. mean all the extra weight is because of the 10 speed, or did you do some enhancements to this to really make it pump? We work a lot to make uh, to put on the ground our torque that is already 910 uh, foot pound, yeah. as you know, as ex exactly like the current production. We work uh, a lot on improving the capacity of the engine to tow, to increase the towing capacity. That is the big hit from uh, our new uh, Silverado. Yes. Okay, yeah. so we work in improving the fan that move from 25.5 inches to 28 inches. We work uh, in in increasing 28 uh, inch fan. 28 Holy inch cow! You, you do airplanes with that? What? Wow! You have seen that. We have a bigger uh, oil cooler with uh, 19 plates instead of 14 plates, so we improve that a lot. We work even on the fine tuning of the cylinder head gasket. A lot of fine tuning have been done, together with the fact that we have a completely new calibration to match with the 10 spin. Now we are capable to put on the ground the complete torque of this engine, and this is quite amazing. We work even on the calibration for the turbocharger. From a turbocharger point of view, we increase it. You know that we were already top of class for the um, engine brake. Now we increase of further 14% the engine brake. Well, that's good. So you have, is it a bigger turbo than you had before? No, the turbo is the same, but we fine tune the calibration and the overall validation in a different way. Oh, the, fin, the are fins are different? Yeah. Okay. No, the fan, the, the van are still the same, but we were able to improve uh, the reliability and average by 14%. It was a lot of fine tuning done on the calibration, on the development of the engine, uh, on the validation of the engine, really. This is our famous doing that. The turbocharger is still the same, uh, but how we fine tune the calibration and how we were able to validate and develop the overall matching together with the transmission, we have been able to improve our engine brake cap performances by 14%. 14% now, is it? tighter or what, what how does it help the exhaust brake work better i mean i still have the uh, arms that that uh, fluctuate for the yes absolutely we it's still the vein that is closing to yeah. increase uh, our uh, uh, engine brake capacity okay we simply work on the validation and the calibration of the specific electric actuator you know that we have a later actuator so to be faster and more precise in our actuation okay. well, it's always been electric hasn't it because i know ford went yeah. hydraulic and then it went electric exactly yeah. probably I don't know about them, but we we develop this one and we further improve our capacity. Okay, so that means I'll hardly even use my foot brake when I'm going down the hill. Just let your I don't know the past generations we with your cruise. To use brake, yes, right? with because <laughs> okay. your cruise control would lock it right in. It was a wonderful setup you had with cruise. We on implemented the new announced uh, uh, strategy with through our controller, so we have even uh, a smarter engine brake actuation. So if uh, the, the driver is by chance forgetting to activate uh, the engine brake is automatically activated with a specific strategy over a certain RPM. Oh, and this is automatically? Because, yeah, because yeah, the Colorado Canyon diesel with the baby Duramax do that. Yeah. And you can still activate it through the bottom, okay? okay? Nothing has changed from that time, but for safety, we even introduce a smart actuation that in case you are going to forget it, is automatically activated over a certain RPM. Oh, that's so good. I like that idea. Yeah. The system is recognizing that you are going down the hill. Uh, you are increasing the speed with the high towing, and so it's able to compensate it through an automatic automation of the engine wow. brake. Well, that's cool. Well, I mean, do, do you know what axle if axle ratio is still 373? Or I mean, I mean, I need, I'll talk to the axle guy. Yeah, because that would all be part of the same combination and where you hold your RPMs and, and keep your torque curve up. Because I know that's your goal. Absolutely. Yeah, that, goal. that is exactly our case. Is Obviously, the torque curve better now, or is it the same? The, it, the torque is, is the same, but how we are able to put on the ground, thanks to the new 10 speed, uh, 10 speed are a lot. Uh, you, you should really drive it. Uh, we are yeah, proud I, of I that. To, it is yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, it's figured, amazing the match. Yeah, if you didn't crank up the power, I figured it had to be in a 10 speed, yeah. the magic, for those kind of terrible weights. Uh, way in the sky, yeah, weights. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And together with uh, all the improvement of uh, the complete drive line, uh, the frame of the, uh, of the vehicle that is improved compared with the previous uh, uh, truck is really the perfect match for our customer. Well, that's cool. I, you, I mean, I know you don't give out fuel mileage numbers and neither does the EPA. Do you think it'll have better fuel mileage or? We're working for that. Because a 10 speed should. Yeah, absolutely. And, the, and this is the perfect match, as I stated before. We are working still uh, through the homologation to the uh, different phases. So you will know soon uh, the numbers. Okay, cool. Well, I know you guys had a big change in this. Was that 2015 when they did 
a whole remite make of the engine. Yeah, the Alpha P came in, uh, in as model year 17, so yeah. I would say the end of 16, beginning of 17. Okay. And this is the perfect evolution of that engine. Yeah, that was a big deal change. I remember, yeah, you know, watching the angle of the crane, the rods, and all that stuff. Yeah. Was yeah. A big step in terms of performances. Now we're really proud of the current level. Now the important thing is to put on the ground and not to look at the academic number, as Jacqueline was mentioning yeah. in the introduction. Well, that's great. That's great. Now, and now, now your first name is easy to remember, Max. Max. I can remember. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Okay, another engineer, another transmission. This is that six-speed. And it's been redone, and it's got a bigger number. It's really cool. It's a 6.6, so you can't forget that. It used to be the 6-liter. Yep. And I remember that one. And what's your name? Rich Marduce. Okay, and you're the, the assistant chief for the six-speed rear-wheel drive and front-wheel drive transmissions. Okay, well, this is cool. I remember the old the 6-liter, or the 6.0, or the 6-speed. What was it called? A... We got a 6L45, a 6L50, a 6L80, a 6L90. Which one we was called, in the heavy duty? Is it the 90? It was always the 90. Okay, the 6L90, I remember, uh, you know, you could get that in the 410 rear end. It did really well. It just was not a, you know, a, a racing machine. And well, this is the same transmission we put in the CTSV oh, and really? the Camaro ZL1. So it was a racing machine in those applications. Well, that 6L90, I mean, you guys had it forever. And I remember talking to the engineers back then they told me that that transmission had the least amount of warranty work done it was like their favorite transmissions for That's correct yeah and, and then, one of the highest jd power ratings yeah so I, there's nothing wrong with it mm -hmm. i think you just needed a bigger engine attached to it <laughs> and now we have that yes and that's so cool. We got two six sixes in the lineup, but yeah, I know this transmission is good. My brother's got one. I mean, you know, and it's all still planetaries and all the normal stuff. Did you put any more discs in, or what'd you do for the extra power? Well, so what we ended up having to do is we basically evaluated the transmission from back to front, uh, and when doing that, we just we discovered the gear set was fully capable of handling the new engine. All of the shafting, both input, output, and internal, were totally capable of handling it. Okay. We did from a horsepower perspective. We realized the clutch packs weren't capable of handling that horsepower. So we ended up in each of the individual clutch packs, we've added one clutch and one backing plate to each one, and that got us to the horsepower capacity that we needed. Okay. The uh, clutch packs themselves had enough room in there for that we could fit that extra clutch pack by just moving the snap ring groove. Well, really? So we were able to do that. Uh, from a torque standpoint, the torque converter in the current HD is not capable of handling the torque of the new engine. Yeah. And so what we did, we looked at components we had in existence and we took a heavy duty diesel torque converter and a heavy duty gas torque converter that's in the current truck. And we took all the torque carrying components from the diesel and married them to the damping and spring components from the gas. Because the spring and the damping is based on the engine firing frequencies, and diesel and gas are totally different. Yeah. So we were able to take gasoline components, marry them up with diesel components, come up with a torque converter without having to tool up any new parts. That's cool, because I know on a, on a diesel, that torque converter kind of rocks. It, it gets abused a lot. Well, and that's why we've added CPAs in the, our diesels now. Like our midsize truck with the 6L50 has got a CPA in it to handle the diesel. What CPA stand for? Centrifugal pendulum absorber. Oh. It's becoming new to the industry okay, now. It takes the force out. And it totally dampens the entire diesel firing frequencies. Oh, okay. That's, well, that's good. I mean, I remember looking at torque converters that were all twisted to hell from those diesels. Yeah, when we launched the midsize truck with the diesel a few years ago, we introduced that technology into that torque converter. Oh, I really like that truck. That is cool. Now, I, I'm glad it sounds like you didn't take away any of the dependability or any of the reliability or the longevity. Because I love that old transmission. Nobody knew how good it was. It's are identical. Well, that's I mean, good. Other than adding these components and then marrying two sets of components here, everything else is the same as the current truck. Now, how much more does it weigh with the extra clutches and all that? The extra clutches you wouldn't even know if it's by less than a kilogram. Okay. Because these very they aren't really that heavy. Yeah. I mean, if you can see from the the parts themselves, they're not very thick at all. Yeah. I don't know kilograms. I'm not a drug dealer. What's that oh, mean in pounds? Two pounds. Two pounds. Okay. <laughs> Someday I'll learn the metric system, but uh, not yet. But that's cool. Now, how come, because of all this new stuff you're doing, why didn't you go to a 10-speed? You could have done that. I think when they looked at it, we've been married to that small block engine for so long, and it's been so dependable and durable, and the customers love it, that there was no reason to go to all new technology in 10-speed and add the additional gears. So okay. we decided that we would just keep the six speed that we're tried and true. There's a lot of six speeds out there. I mean, it's kind of, the, we were so happy to go from a four to a five to a six. And we made the 
been making about a million a year for many years now. Wow. So it shares components with some of your car transmissions and... Uh, yeah, we're, there's no more six speeds in cars. They've all been moved up to eights oh. and tens. Okay. But we are still in all our mid-size trucks, both domestic and overseas. We're in the full-size vans. Yeah. And all, we're in our light duty and the heavy duty new pickup trucks. Well, that's cool. Any, any bigger in capacity for oil? Do you have a bigger cooler on it or anything? It's exactly identical. To everything else is the same as what we have today. Okay. Yeah, we're trying to get all the ratings now. You know, gave us this giant number. It's 35,500. So right. now we got to figure out well we, everything else will tow the gas in this six-speed. So. The only thing, additional thing we did is we have so much confidence in this transmission that we've completely eliminated the dipstick in these vehicles. I know, and everybody's doing that. I, I like a dipstick. So now your service guy needs to have to take a plug and put his own little dipstick, or you just don't worry about it for no, 200,000 miles? Actually, all of the new transmissions that are doing that have a uh, plug on the bottom of the oil pan. Okay. And basically, you raise the vehicle, get the transmission temperature to what's pre described for that particular transmission. You remove the plug, and there's a standpipe in the oil pan. And that's okay. the height the oil is supposed to be at that temperature. So if okay. it's overfilled, it'll leak out. And if it's underfilled, you just put some in until it starts to leak out and you know it's filled properly. Wow. Yeah, I know Toyota, when they did that, I thought, you guys are crazy. Didn't Ford do it? You guys are crazy. And I guess you guys are crazy now, but. <laughs> well, we eliminated it in the cars long ago with yeah. the six-speed. Yeah. And we eliminated it when we had five-speeds in our vehicles. Yeah, I'm an old redneck, so all that stuff just seems weird to me. But yeah. that's the future, I guess. people in trucks are used to checking their. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, everybody's got the automatics. Some of them there's a manual even made anymore. So we depend on these transmissions, and you're tolling big loads. In the old days, you know, an automatic in the 70s, when I was driving a lot of trucks, you couldn't depend on an automatic. Everybody had manuals. Right. And then they got so much better in the 80s and the 90s, and here we are. So now, you know, you got grade shifting. You can do like a manual, I mean, like a manual would do. Right. You can change gears. So it does all that they used to do. It's just, it, it's new technology. You got to get used to it. Yep. I guess we'll figure it out. Well, thanks, Rich. I, I appreciate this. We'll wait to go out and drive them. Yeah, they drive great, too. Oh, that's why I'm, I'm hoping. That's what I want to try. I live in the mountains, Colorado. Oh, you do? So I want to get up to 11,000 feet right. and see how things work, mm -hmm. you know? We've had them there before. Oh, I'm sure. I see you guys camouflaged all over the place. We chase you. We're the guys chasing you around, chasing around trying to take pictures. Time. Yeah. <laughs> You're the ones we're being warned about. Yeah. That, that tells not to talk to Mr. Truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, this 2500, you see the cords coming out the back. I think two of those are for the rear camera on the trailer. I know the wireless uh, systems what they have for tire pressure monitoring on the trailer. Um, this is that new mirror. It looks like it's got a couple double joints on there, but you know, it, I think it power folds and power telescopes. You can see the little tabs on it. I think those tabs is what holds it in place, either all the way out or all the way in, or on both sides. But that's cool looking mirror. I mean, I, I want to get out in the, in the real world and try it, but you can see how that's where it slides. And that back piece, I always thought that was kind of different this is the high country so this is a one nice truck yes indeed and this is uh this has got my favorite grill of course this has uh the hood scoop hood scoop is kind of confusing i think the gas ones do too but i don't think they're uh real i think they're just kind of a fake hood scoop but anyway this is that high country i love that grill look at this and look at where the lights are positioned on it that makes a difference of being in this in a work truck or you know even the lt <clears throat> but I'm used to this nose on the Silverado. I actually like this one. But it's, of course, it's the most expensive one. That's kind of how things work out. There's the nice wheels for 2020. This has a sprayed in bed liner. There's that corner step for the bumper. I love that in the pocket. New wheels. There's the side steps. So you can get up there and check out your toolbox. And of course, they finally moved both fillers up high. This one was a gas engine, so it just has a plug in it. But uh, this step, I like this step. Get up there and get your crossover toolbox, or you might even be able to reach your safety chains on your trailer, on your gooseneck. But, yeah, yeah, Z71, so you got the off-road package. <clears throat> on this one, I think this is an LT, because it doesn't have a chrome grill. Oh, now we're in Robot City. I think sometime <laughs> in this particular factor, there's more robots than people. They are everywhere. They do all kinds of cool things. There's big ones, the big Megatrons, and there's a lot of little ones. And they just do small things, little tiny welds, and little spots, and little pieces that they fabricate. And, of course, assembly line is all over this place. 
and it's it's interesting to watch them and how they separate everything. So it's the same body is all there; it's just all spread out. So here you got the cab separated from the bed. So much to cover in this review. The new uh, the four wheel drives and these heavy duties also have an auto mode in four wheel drive, like what the half tons, 1500s do. So you just leave it auto and it'll engage four wheel drive all by itself. I've never really seen that application with the heavy duties before, so that's new. And you know, this has we don't know about the three inch ball or not, whether or not we're getting a three inch ball in Australia. You have to have them on everything for years now. And usually most of the aftermarket hitches, if you're above 30,000 pounds, have to go to a three inch ball for your gooseneck. But you got the power up, power down tailgate on the high end models. And you also got the brake controller on the right side. Here in Judgment Day and all that. So I worry about a little bit of this in Transformers. So it looks all real here. Of course, these robots take a lot of maintenance too. You have a whole crew that just, I don't know if they grease them or what they do oil them up. I'm sure they have a whole process they have to do with these puppies. But the bed, it was, I just love going through assembly plants and watching how it progresses. Here, you know, the same line. Sometimes it's way above your head. Sometimes it's floor level. Then they have all these systems that can lift them up to your height so it's easier to work on things. And these little things on the floor, those little tugs with the green carts behind them, those are actually robots that pull these carts all over. They're all programmed to follow the yellow lines and do these things. But it's very interesting. And so here you see the tailgate separated from the bed, separated from the body. And you get up here a ways, you actually can see on you know, they run GMCs and shit and Silverados for the same plant. So you'll see one like right there. That's a double tailgate. So you've got that uh, that step tailgate the GMC has. And that's what it looks like. It's all separated out. Which is pretty cool to see all this. This is all metal. There's no aluminum on these bodies. They're all metal. They're different than uh, what the light duty is the 1500 where it has aluminum doors and uh, hoods and tailgates this is all galvanized sheet metal and a lot of it interesting to see the cab stack separately the tailgate stack separately fenders all those components and you know and, and the, the robots do some welding on some of these things some, some spot welding and all that neat stuff of course, we were rushed through this. Wish we had time. There's where the pedestal goes on the door. You see the hole in the door. This is some of their footage of how the mirrors work. This is the old double arm mirrors that we're used to. And here's the new one. And it's full thing of power folds and power telescopes. So they've caught up to Ford now in the mirror situation. We'll see how the, the single arms are not easy to take the vibration out of. I know semis have tried them for years, and they've gotten to where they work now. And, you know, Ram's done it for years, done a single arm. Yeah, there it shows that that sliding mirror. Pretty cool. They got a really neat light on there too. It's like a spotlight. Which actually is pretty functional on how that works. But uh, you know, it gives you more visibility having a single arm versus say a double arm. And I like that. Now this is uh the block heater, which I'm sure is gonna be on most diesels, but some of the gas engines in cold country, it's it's integrated into the bumper corner there with a little spring loaded cap. So you can actually uh you know, not have to have the dangling cord under the hood, underneath the grill like we've had for decades. And this is a little get more sophisticated to keep making these things prettier. I think the angle on the windshield is a little different. I'm sure that's more for getting rid of some noise than it is uh, fuel mileage. But uh, looks like on the diesel in a way, the new axle ratio is a 342 instead of a 373. It used to be that 373 was on everything they made and the only option you had. Hey, my last engineer interview of the day. We are here at the Flint, Michigan plant for the 2020 Heavy Duty. And we've got two of them behind us. One is LT. We're here, <laughs> we're here between the LTZ and the LT. It used to mean leather. You know, they used to have LTs and LSs. And anyway, these are the new 2020 Heavy Duties. Yeah, are these diesels? Yes. Yes. These are I see the hood scoops. Yes. These are the Duramax diesels with that 10-speed Allison. But anyway, I'm here with Frank Brunel, Frank Brunel, and he is the guy who's going to tell us all about the new trailer towing 
uh, I guess it's options, technology, yeah. technology for seeing where in the world you are with your trailer. Because trailers, I, I pull trailers all the time, but not everybody does. It's nice to be able to see around them, and you've got all the technology to do that. You know, you did so many cool things with the half ton, the 1500. You know, you got the sticker in the door. It tells you your weights that you, that you can. And this has the same thing, right? Yep. That's cool. So then you know what your max toy towing is, max tongue weight, maybe weight distributing weight too. And then all, all those different numbers, payload, rear axle, all that. And that keeps you safe, and that way you don't have to spend three days on the internet trying to find those numbers. I like this. Okay. That's what's it's good is you guys are integrating yourself with the trailer industry, so you can help each other out and find out you know what they think is important, and you can design things to make the trailering public safe. So tell me, what is the new trailering engineering technology? So we have a couple of things, right? You you mentioned partnering with NATM. You know, we've worked with them in the past on the light duty truck. We've extended that with the heavy duty, working with a company called ASA Electronics. We're integrating a, you know, a smart trailer experience with, with the new truck. And the idea here is it's a Bluetooth connection from your phone to the trailer. We pulled that functionality into the My Chevrolet app and we bring it into the truck through a projection section. So ex imagine your experience of driving down the road, we're coming up on our campsite, we wanna make sure our tank levels are okay. You know, maybe, maybe it's a hot day, I wanna turn on the H HVAC, turn on the cooler, um, air conditioner. You know, we can do that all from the center stack screen via a projection session with, with this My Chevrolet app that's communicating to the trailer via Bluetooth with the ASA in command system. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we've added that's new from the 1500 is a lot more camera views around trailering that will stay active while driving down the road with help visibility. You saw um, video footage of the transparent trailer feature, so this is allow you to virtually see. That is cool. You can see through the trailer, see what's behind you. That is so awesome. It's only on bumper poles. It's only on bumper poles, conventional bumper poles, um, box type trailers. Uh, the other feature we're giving you is a, is a biasing view, so as you're driving down the road, you're making a turn, the screen will shift to the left or right as, as oh, the truck's yeah. making the turn. Yeah, that makes sense. We have a turn activation feature, so you turn that turn signal on, we'll flash this down the right or left side of that um, truck and trailer, allow you to see the view while you're making the turn. Uh -huh. uh, we do picture in picture, which is similar to the 1500, so you get this side mirror view and the rear trailer view all in, in one stitched image, or one combined image. Um, we do the bed hitch view, so Oh, you, pointing down? Pointing down, so you oh, got yeah. a camera on the top of the chimsel looking down on the cargo, so we get cargo bed view. So there's all the trailering related views that are, are new with the heavy duty truck here. Um, the other part that's, that's, that's part of the advanced trailering system, you saw in the 1500 where we did the vehicle trailering app, right? So you yeah. get the trailer tire pressure, sensors, all, all, the, all that type of information in the vehicle. We've integrated that into our OnStar architecture so we can sync it to the cloud and you can now create trailer profiles from your My Chevrolet app makes the ease of creating a profile easier. We're also extending that function to be able to share it. So if I want to share my trailer profile with you to keep track of mileage or time use to help with maintenance reminders on, on my trailer, I can do that now using using the My Chevrolet app. Well, that's cool. Now, I know you got all these cameras. Do you have a way of measuring the trailer? I mean, I know you can swing stuff around and look at the trailer, but if somebody's coming over your blind spot and then one of the corners that you can't see, even with good trailering mirrors, does yours give you a warning? Just, just the visual, um, being able to see better around the trailer. So the transparent trailer view helps with that. The side, the cameras on the side mirrors it helps you with that. The rear trailer camera helps you with that. Um, as far as being able to see more around the yeah. truck and trailer. Now that's cool. Now you got the big towing mirrors now, and they power telescope. I love that. Now I didn't look in there. Is your brake controller on the right side or is it on the wrong side? Yeah, you moved it on the half ton. It, it's it's the same as the half ton. Oh, that's awesome. That's one thing I really don't have is a whole lot of internal pictures. But that is so cool. I've waited for that a long time. And this is a bigger cab. you got five inch longer wheelbase. So you got at least four inch more leg room somewhere in there. Yep. But that is so cool. I mean, everybody wants more room. And you're in these damn things. And of course, I'm a little different. We're in Colorado, so we take long drives. You know, we're 500 miles across our states. Right. It's not like back east where you go through three states in a day. But uh, so that is all really nice for those long trips. A nice, big, comfortable truck. And then, you know, man, I want to tow a 35,500 pounder. Right. I got to see what a normal dually tows too. And I love the side steps. I love, of course, the bigger steps on the back and the back bumper. That, that stuff you can use with a trailer because all that other stuff, you can't. I mean, even the GMC thing, you can't use it with a trailer. So you got a tailgate that goes up and down and it's just, it's too awesome. And you lowered your bed. 
I'm so happy about that. It lowered it by an inch, so it's a little easier for especially fifth wheels. Horse traders, we don't have a lot of room, but fifth wheels, you have no room. So all that room you get for your bed rail, so you can get the damn thing hooked up, let it squat a little bit and take off and not bang it. Because, you know, you need at least six inches. Some of these fifth wheels have about three inches. So, yeah, no, it's all cool. Yep, this is go. awesome. You got better visibility. You got all this stuff and improved. And there's, you got to talk to 20 people to get the whole story here. <laughs> But that's cool. I appreciate it. You yeah, thanks, Frank. You did good. Thank you. And I want to use all this stuff. So give me a truck.